Joe, if I could turn to you a little bit on this subject, because um, you know, from a from a radiation standpoint, we're really coupling now two therapies: hormonal therapy, radiation therapy. You know, a lot of people have focused on the local therapy. They kind of put this aside. Maybe a lot of these issues, they think, well, that's really the primary care doctor will deal with that. How, how do you, you've heard what, what Chuck said. Well, how do you incorporate that into your practice when you're combining therapies? Well, well, firstly, for patients with higher risk for locally advanced disease, I think the evidence is extremely strong now that the combination of radiation and some form of androgen deprivation is, is a Im, improves outcome. There, there's no question about that. So when I talk to a patient who's at slightly higher risk, whether it's because of T3 disease or Gleason 8 or above, um, I tell the patient that radiation on its own is not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. So I, descri I describe different types of hormone therapy. Uh, like Chuck, I also describe uh, the, the lifestyle changes that are required to deal with that. But I also sometimes consider using um, non-castration hormone therapy. So for example, in Europe, we can use biclutamide, 150 milligrams per day. It's very effective and it reduces some of the metabolic effects that you get with castration therapy. Um, but I think it's very important that patients understand the reasoning behind the hormone therapy. It's to enhance, it's to basically improve the results of local therapy. And we know that uh, hormone therapy dramatically improves it. We've seen this over many different trials, uh, that the addition of hormone therapy to radiation, the addition to radi of radiation to hormone therapy, dramatically improves survival. Uh, in fact, it's probably one of the most dramatic randomized trial evidence of improved survival in prostate cancer that we have. Mm -hmm. And probably, I think, the combination of hormones and radiation are one of the biggest reasons why we are seeing a, a reduction in prostate cancer mortality overall. Fair enough. Very good. Chris, when you're dealing with hormonal therapy and radiation therapy and you're having a patient who's struggling a little bit with these side effects, how does that factor into the how you manage it? Does it change the length of therapy you're going to give this patient? Does it change, you know, as Joe said, you know, the, the agents you're using or things like that? Any, any monitoring? You know, Chuck talked about exercise, but what are some of the things you counsel patients around what you can do to manage some of those issues? So uh, I'll pick up on one thing and say this conversation may well actually also ex extend to the surgical setting if the neoadjuvant studies um, pan out. This, study, this conversation will get even more relevant as we intensify the hormonal therapy. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say this is not going to go away, it's going to get more relevant That's and right. underscore that. The, the, what I do is I counsel patients on the side effects and they say this is what may happen and whether we can get you through the whole period depends on how you tolerate this. So I set the expectation, this is what we would like to do, but if we get to a point where we're increasing your comorbidities, which may outweigh the treatment benefit, we may have to adapt, improvise, overcome, like the CIA. We have to realize we have to individualize. One other thing that I'm actually very clear about, what I've learned is that sexuality is also a major issue, and I monitor their actual, um, their emotional well-being. I have this great analogy from a patient of mine who shared this with me, and he is a, this is gonna be a bit of a silly story, but it is very emphatic, and it, my patients understand it. Chris, I'm a psychologist, You've now put me on this testosterone suppression and I've been talking about libido in couples counseling for years. I now have no testosterone and I now know what libido is, he says to me. And I said, well, what is it? He said, there are 12 naked women. They're all very attractive. One's carrying a hamburger and all I'm doing is looking at the hamburger. And so I and then he said, to, and I said to him, so how do you feel about that? He said, that actually doesn't bother me. And my, the thing is, we, there are, however, patients who that bother is extreme and you need to actually monitor and help them with the couples counseling. So not only is it the exercise and encouraging them to exercise, it's talking about their sexual well-being, their partner's relationships, and you sometimes need to really focus on that to be able to get them through the two years. Um, others actually get really depressed about it. Others get angry. Others get, uh, what was it all? I'm getting much less whiplash. My life's a lot more co less complicated. Yeah. So that's the other thing I think we should talk about. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting I bring that up and, I, and, and I've, I've seen that as well and it, and it is a struggle, you know, and, and sometimes that is a reason to modify what we're doing and then, but it's certainly a reason to counsel for sure.